Hello and welcome to Kerbal Swiss Around 1.2.2. Today I'm doing something a bit silly. And basically, I found a picture of the first rocket I, or no, excuse me, the fifth rocket I ever made in KSP. And this was back in point fourteen point four, or maybe, uh, maybe point thirteen, the, uh, original demo. I'm not 100% sure, I don't remember. However, I decided I should go ahead and recreate it. And where the hell do they put parachutes? Are they under utility? Yes, they are. All right, so we're going to do with the modern parts the closest we can to what that original rocket was. And, ooh, I forgot about the giant drill. I forget about a lot of things. All right, so we're going to need decouplers. We're going to be using only one meter parts, and we're going to be using only small fuel tanks because that's all we had. Oh, yeah, decouplers on a different tab now. I'm not used to these new tabs. Okay, uh, pods, I haven't done a lot of building recently. I need this tank. It was made entirely out of these tanks, these decouplers, oops, yeah, these decouplers, and the, I think I, no, I used both kinds of engines of the swivel and the reliant. I used both kinds, because I had, I had the, uh, the swivel in the center and the reliant on the outside. And if I remember correctly, the difference between them is a difference in thrust. And do they use, yeah, they use different amount, different amounts of fuel as well. And I use that to my advantage in the design, if I remember correctly. I'm looking at my little, <laughs> oh my god, I just looked at what I did in that design. And oh my god, I did something rather stupid. I also had SAS, uh, SAS modules. Uh, of course, back then they were bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick two of these on here. Oops. I just accidentally hit the Windows key. Good job, me. I'm actually going to stick two of these on here um, because that is roughly the same size. Now, let's see, and then I use two of these tanks. These tanks are probably slightly too long for what it was, but uh, I feel that this is the most accurate way to make this. So yeah, that was my top stage. Then I had, of course, one of these decouplers. Back then they didn't have shrouds either. I guess I should turn off the shroud then, huh? Yeah, that way it's it's more appropriate to my original design by not having a shroud on it. All right, and then we had two sets of these. And were they all decoupled? Decoupled? Yeah, that's a good word. Um, yes, they were. No, yeah, now I remember. Yeah, so then here in the swivel, we have a swivel down in the center. And then we had the yep radial decouplers, and I did six-way symmetry, so six-way... And then we had a bunch of these, kind of at the same height. I'll use this to uh, kind of get that to the right height. Obviously, back then, it was a little more difficult to get the right height, but not too difficult. Um, oops, let's grab that. And I had it like that, and like that. And oops, let's put one of these back over here, because I might need it. And let's turn off the shroud. Actually, it doesn't matter on those ones. Those ones aren't going to have anything under them. But we do need struts. Obviously, we have auto strut now, but uh, no, no, no. I'm going for the old school, which means it does have to have struts attaching it all. So we had a ring of them around the top here, and we had another ring around the bottom here. And let's see, we also had from the top of every one, we had from like the top, from the kind of about here, all the way up, basically as far as they could go, which back then was like to here. So put them like that. Then we had, see, we had one more decoupler here under the center, which means I'm going to have to turn off the shroud on that one. And then the SRBs, because the first stage was purely SRBs. So we had one like that. And now for the slightly ridiculous, stupid thing I did, which was I had, oops, let me, oh, no, I'll, I'll go over here and just get another one. Nope, coupling. I had radial decouplers on the whatchamacallit, on the, on the SRBs, and the SRBs were entirely, entirely, something's wrong here about the height. I think I had another SAS unit down here, because looking at the image, it's kind of hard to tell, it's in low res. This was back when I was using a shitty laptop for KSP too, so it was very difficult to, whoops, to see what's going on, nope, the center, thank you. And I, I assume this is correct, it may not be correct, but uh, I'm just going to go with it anyhow, because it's close enough. And I'm going to see if I can get in here and 
Did that copy? Yes, that copied the decoupler as well. Okay, good. And I had, yeah, a second set of these all the way around, also offset down. And then we, of course, have the wing tips, the original wing tips, the only ones we had back then. And we had another set of struts holding the bottom. Let's see. Oh, did I have... I think I had, like, a set in here and another set on the outside, like this. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but started the hell. Of course, the game was wobbly, wobblier back then, so that kind of helps explain it. There we go. Yeah, so it was like this. And, um, yeah, other than the staging, that's right. Okay, so we had these and this little SRB here. And then we'd decouple the outer ones, the inner ones, and this stage here. At the same time, we would fire these six engines and the center engine. There we go, the center engine. So all the SRBs at once, then the outer decouplers, the top decoupler there, the inner engine there, the six engines there, and the inner decouplers there. Then we'd decouple the outer bits when they ran out. Then we'd decouple this and fire this engine at the same time, and then decouple and shoot. And uh, yeah, so that's the fifth rocket I ever built in KSP, which is pretty much the same thing as the previous rockets, I think, except um, slight modifications and more struts because uh, the original ones kind of fell apart, as you might expect. So I will give it the name it had back then, KSP-5. <laughs> Very good name, yeah? This can only go well. Hey, it works. It was not a flawed design after all. <laughs> oh god, I'm scared of what this is going to do. I don't think it'll go too badly, honestly. But uh, we shall see. Of course, right now, all we have is... We have no throttle control. We're going quite, quite fast. Very low in the atmosphere, but quite fast. And of course, we have a shit ton of drag because of the whole... Wow. That was fun. That was fun, I have to admit. That was really fun. Shit ton of drag. We should probably throttle back a bit there because we don't need that much drag and then try to mm, tip it over but not too much because we don't want to uh, lose control all right let's take a look apoapsis is already pretty high of course this thing could easily make orbit back then and probably could even easier 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 make orbit now I'm just going to go at a, uh, oops, not that. I'm going to go at about this angle or so. All right, let's take a look how our orbit is doing. We're already, we're already really close to just being at orbital altitude. So yeah, even though this is a shitty design, old, overcomplicated, well, overcomplicated in terms of number of struts, but otherwise it's kind of a simple very simple design. You can see we're already halfway to orbital velocity as well. Although, of course, that will change as we continue going up. And uh, let's see which one of these is the center one. That one. So that one should have, yep, more fuel than the others. It will last a bit longer. And yeah, this crazy idea works. Surprised it still does. I was, I was kind of hoping for something more spectacularly horrible, like uh, it just disintegrating immediately. But nope. It's actually going to work out just fine. And uh, I'm just going to time warp us a little bit. Hey, that's another thing. We didn't have physical time warp back then. You had to take the long, slow approach to orbit. You could never, you could do nothing about it. All right, 66. It's not going up fast enough, and we're getting pretty close to it. So I'm going to time warp back down, throttle up to one third. And uh, we might get into orbit just on this stage. I don't know. Depends how, how long the fuel lasts. We're very close to... what was that? Oh. Nope. Okay. So we do have to burn this. Oh, that's so cool. It's like a Korolev cross, but in six directions instead of four. Yep. We need to uh, be accelerating much quicker. Oh. Come on. There we go. And... four... I'm tilting slightly to push the apoapsis back. Also, of course, we need the apoapsis to go higher, so that's a thing as well. All 
Okay, 74 kilometers on that side, 65 on that side. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, this is a fresh install that I've just done this on, so... Brand new save, brand new world. Rockets falling to Earth. Kerbin, I mean, Kerbin. Yeah, shh, I know what I'm talking about. Alright, well, in any case, we got up here on our last stage, so yeah, it's it's about as effective as it was back then, it seems. Um, let's see, come oh my god, this is gonna take a while. Like, it's only gonna take like 20 seconds, but it's enough for me to be like, ugh, I have to wait on this crap. But fortunately, here we go now. Yes, there we go. Now I should be able to time warp. Oh, never mind. Because I know the atmosphere actually stops at 69, uh... 0.5, ooh, excuse me, kilometers, but it won't let me actually time warp until 70. That's interesting. Alright, well, time to see if it survives coming back as well. And I think I'll go to right about here, and we'll just go ahead and whip it around. And oh yes, it has a ton of SAS control on it, so it is quite easily controlled. And I don't remember if I was always smart about how I re-entered or if I just kind of went too crazy so I'm gonna put it a little farther the down farther the down than I need to and unfortunately that does mean we're gonna start having atmospheric interface way early which means I'm just gonna decouple that and uh, say bye bye to the rest of the rocket let's flip this around and have it kind of aligned well enough with our uh, retrograde Wow, it's just like pitch black. You can't see a damn thing. Also, I just remembered this was, of course, before heating was a thing. So there's no heat shield on this. Should be fine. Should be fine. Oh. I've uh, accidentally been pointing this directly forward instead of directly backwards. That was smart of me. Right, well, now we're slowing down and we're coming to sunrise and it makes significantly more sense than looking off that direction and going, where's the sun? There we go. Nice sunrise. And this also hopefully serves as pretty good proof that uh, you don't need a heat shield for low speed re-entries, and by low speed I mean from low Kerbin orbits. Also, do you like how I put the, the version number here? I, there's a setting that lets you have that on there even if you're uh, not on a pre-release. And I was like, oh, I'll enable that so you can see that I'm on 1.2.2. And uh, yeah, done re-entering, done rocketeering. Thanks for watching this terrible plan. Actually, you know what? There is one other thing that needs to be done. And it is that we need to survive with the parachute coming down. And three, two, one. And I'm going to go ahead and turn down time warp. And I believe that's set for the default, which is 500. Also, of course, because this was back when there was no changing that. It was just the default. Also, it's kind of fun to just stare at this. I don't know why, but it is. But yeah, successful mission. Jeb is totally happy and fine. What happens if I click this? Okay, nothing. There's just a thing popping up that I was like, I'm not sure what's going on. And then of course we have the interior overlay, which has the door still there. I think that's kind of interesting. Like it just shows the background of whatever's there on the outside, but the door is a thing that stays visible. Interesting. And there we go. Oops, come on, click, thank you. Yes, 